good book was meant to be shared with others. Urbana lawyer Henry Whitney recalled the time that Abraham Lincoln picked up a copy of Byron's poems off of his desk and began to recite Child Harold's Pilgrimage, a meditation on the Battle of Waterloo. Whitney wrote, This poetry was very familiar to him, evidently. He looked specifically for and found it with no hesitation and read it with a fluency that indicated that he had had read oft times before. Urbana residents have had the same combination of love of literature and the need to share books. The city has one of the oldest public libraries in the state, but it did not have a public library building until 1918. The first library opened in 1872, but it was only opened by subscription. That is, you paid a membership fee. Two years later, though, the city acquired the books and dropped the charge and that's why it is known as the Free Library. Its collections moved from rented rooms in the Masonic Block to several other sites until landing in City Hall. Around the country, town library boards had turned to steel magnate Andrew Carnegie for funds. His gifts provided 1,406 towns with buildings devoted exclusively to libraries. Though Carnegie readily granted money, He also placed several conditions on the gifts. Municipalities had to own the site where the library would be built. He also believed that the community which is not willing to maintain a library had better not possess it. These maintenance pledges were a major stumbling block for many towns and villages. Urbana's library board set out to convince Carnegie that the city deserved his gift, and in 1914, voters approved a bond issue to purchase land for a new building. It was one of the first local elections in which women could vote. It was reported that considerable trouble was experienced by clerks recording names. Widows almost invariably gave the Christian name of their lamented husband when they should have been giving their own. For the record, while only one out of five men opposed the library, only nine women voted against it. Only a few months later, however, word came that Carnegie had turned Urbana down. The city, he said, was prosperous enough to support a library on its own. Bitterly, a local newspaper editor wrote, It's bad luck to ye, Andy Mon, and may thistles and nary a bluebell grow on your grave. Defiantly, William Coffin, chairman of the building committee, declared Andrew Carnegie can take his blood money and go to hell. Urbana is going to build a library with Urbana money. In the end, it was Urbana money that paid for the new library. In January 1917, Mary Busey stepped forward and offered $35,000 for a new building as a memorial to her husband, Samuel T. Busey, a Civil War veteran, banker, and civic leader who died in 1909 in a tragic drowning while on vacation in Minnesota. A local observer wrote, Mr. Carnegie did Urbana a real favor by sliding our request. Among the primary benefits was that there were few restrictions on the architecture, and the library board wisely turned to Joseph Royer, the city's leading architect in the late 19th and early 20th century, to design the building. This was one of several Royer Design buildings that you will see on this tour. For the library, a temple of learning, he used classical themes in his design with the use of cut limestone on the exterior and marble in the entry foyer. Today, the Free Library has a reputation as one of America's best public libraries based on surveys published by the American Library Association. If you have time, Step inside and visit the Champaign County Archives, which holds a wealth of information on the history of Urbana and Champaign County.